Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to give the platform a moment to invite everyone to join us. Um, I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to navigate our platform. You'll notice that there is a questions panel. Um, it went forward. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there, that's okay. <laughs> There's a questions panel. You might see questions from us in the chat, but you're able to respond in the questions panel. And that includes um, like anything that you want. I know that the way it's posted there is a little bit curious because if you have a statement that you would like to answer, just go ahead and put it in the questions panel. Um, these sessions are recorded and will be available on our website at a later date, and which will also include um, a feedback survey and proof of participation if you would like that. Um, if you want, I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll here now and so that we can see who's with us today. You can go ahead and choose one response for me, please. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and close it and share. So today it looks like we have a majority of ESL instructors and instructional specialists and other, which is likely people from my team. So thank you for joining us today. Um, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Debbie Miller. She is um, sharing her experiences with us today. Thank you so much for joining us, Debbie. And if you, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them periodically in the chat box. I'll also note one more thing, sorry. There is a handouts panel where Debbie will be referencing um, a few items today. So those are that's where you'll be able to find what she's talking about. Um, but without further ado, thanks Debbie. Hi everybody. Um, so this is a new platform for me because when I start um, presenting, I'm guessing you can see my entire screen. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, parents and students and teachers, the role of adult ed and family literacy, really long name, um, but we're gonna try to just find out ways that we can engage our adult learners. Um, I have been lucky that the state of Maryland sent me to a national conference for the families, um, National Center for Families Learning, and I learned a lot about that, and I just wanna share some of that with you. Um, so we'll get started. Let's see now. Okay, apparently, there we go. Here we go. Sorry. All right, so I do have some course objectives. Just um, hopefully by the end of the session, you'll you'll demonstrate a better understanding of family literacy, and also that you'll leave at least with two new activities for the family literacy plans. And uh, the major takeaway that I want everybody to just remember is that we are all doing okay with our family literacy program. So I didn't know how to do a poll, but I know that in the chat button, I think I can let you all talk or you can say something to me. Um, I'd like to just know what you think. What is family literacy? Is that something that you all can respond to? So I'll just keep going. I'm not sure. I, I silence. So um, Debbie, we sorry about that. I'm, we did get a response in the question panel. Okay. See, I can't. Um, I don't know. How, oh, here we go. No, it's okay. Um, so everyone in the family can read. Families reading and writing together are two responses that we have. Right. And 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 family literacy is more than just reading and writing together. But that's like the foundational things. Family literacy is is this idea that. Um, we are the child's, or the, excuse me, the parent is the child's first teacher, and we want them to be the best teacher that they possibly can be. But a lot of our learners may not know what their child needs to learn. So um, maybe they haven't had a good example in their life. Maybe they're just frazzled by the realities of, of living. Um, there could be a hundred reasons why our participants are not effective at engaging their child in learning. So what we can do is we can help these parents because we can, if they come to us, they want to learn, we can actually teach them how to work with their children without them ever really realizing it. 
Um, so um, let's see, why is this not moving forward for me? Oh, here we go. So according to a definition from Octay, there are um, four primary focuses for, for family literacy and interactive literacy activities between parent and child, training in the parent activities, literacy training for economic self-sufficiency, and that's really important, and then age-appropriate education for children. Um, the essence of family literacy is that parents are supported as the first teachers of their children, and that's where we can come in. We can come in and we can be that that first, um, we can teach the parents how to teach their children. Um, a lot of times we can provide um, developmental experiences for young children. And I will tell you that in my program here in Allegheny County, um, we have a lot of community partners that are specifically about young children, so zero to four. So we really focus on that. Um, we, we vary our instructional approaches depending on um, the attend the the participants in Allegheny County we have a, a very small almost non-existent ESL population um, we are trying to get an ESL program up and running but for the most part we work with um, native born individuals right. um, so as Octane mentioned there are four pillars of family literacy there's parent education early childhood education Parents and children time together, a lot of you might know that as PACT, and then there's adult education. So in my community, we have a variety of partners, and I'm sure that you do as well. So I want you to think about, maybe you can answer, I'm not sure if you can answer it in questions or in chat. I want you to think about who is in my neighborhood, who is my neighbor in, that I can go to about adult literacy or family literacy. Somebody's raising their hand. Um, so while you're thinking about that, and I'll, I'll keep trying to look at different um, things. Debbie, you know, um, we sorry. do have a comment in the question box. Public okay. library staff, teachers are the neighbors in response to your recent question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I for some reason, it doesn't uh, want to show okay. me any questions. We're here for you. <laughs> Thank you. So libraries are very good. And, and well, see, there it goes again. All right. In Allegheny County, we have three primary pr partners. Now, we do work with our public library system, and our library is actually embedded in all of these programs. So we work very closely with the Judy Center, which is part of the public school system. Um, I sit on the steering committee. We are involved in their family literacy nights. Uh, because while we are not able to provide um, the PACT or the, the children's activity, we can come in and we can offer that literacy part, portion. We can help figure out parents to do that, that sustaining part portion. So our partners are the Judy Center, the YMCA Family Support Center, um, and HRDC Early Head Start, Head Start. We rely on these partners to provide the three portions of the family literacy that we do not pro provide. They rely on us to provide the expertise for the adult learning. And they refer uh, participants to us frequently and we, um, we work with them to figure out ways to get the parent involved to help the children um, so that the parent doesn't go and say, let me just do it all for you, it's quicker, all right? So we provide that systemic and sustained self-educating activities. Um, we work, often we're working towards a high school diploma. I mean, that's where most of our students come from. They, they need that high school diploma. Um, but we also have a, a growing population where they are coming to us because they are looking for wor work readiness skills, and we are able to provide that as well. So a lot of these activities that we're going to discuss here in a little bit are they are um, college and career readiness standards based, so they meet the objectives of the adult education, um, and there's usually a component where there's part of it is for the adult and part of it is where for adult and, and child to be together. 
So we'll explore that in a little bit. Um, so you've all probably heard of Malcolm Knowles and the andragogy. Um, here at Allegheny College, we are actually moving towards the cent learner-centered ideology. Um, and we are focusing a lot of our instructional practices on this. And we actually have um, the LCTLC, which is the learner-centered um, training program that a lot of our staff and faculty are participating in, learning how to, to teach adults. Um, it goes along very closely with, with Malcolm Knowles and Andrew Goji. Um, but it shifts the focus of instruction from the instructor to the learner, putting the interests and needs of the learner as central to the, the dynamic um, force of our adult education classes. The learner can become an engaged participant. They're not just a, a passive participant, but they are actively engaged in their own learning. And so it's that, that answering that question of what's in it for me. Okay. So if we just quickly go over, these are, um, this is the learner-centered um, ideology. Um, it aligns with his six learning principles. The learner is not a passive participant. They are actively involved in the learning process. Um, you can see that the learner is the center and the teacher is a facilitator, helping the, the learner reflect and ask questions and discuss and collaborate and be accountable for the learning that's taking place. And so by, by focusing adult education learning on this, we are able to um, make the, help the, the parent understand that, oh, you know what, if I do it this way in class, then I can do it this way when I am with my child. So there is, a, at the very end of the PowerPoint, um, there is a page that lists all the different resources. There's a really good resource um, that that's from the Peak Performance Center if you wanted to learn more about a learner-centered approach. But we have to put those, those interests first because we know what we need to get our, st our students to learn. But sometimes, you know, the learner comes in and they're just not in the mood to do another uh, math thing. You know, right now with everything that's going on in the world, now is a really good time to let the learner identify something that they want to ask questions about. Maybe they want to learn more about the coronavirus. And so we go to that inquiry stage and we encourage our students to ask questions. What is it you want to know? Why do you want to know it? How do you need to have this information? And then we, we want to ask our students, our, our parents, to share that. Let's discuss it. And we want to use the words that are um, publicly acceptable words that gets the student to think about how should I talk to another person in perhaps a, a structured environment so that they understand they're not necessarily just talking to their friends, you know, at their house. This is a more formal um, process. Um, they can move from discussion to collaboration. They can create something. Maybe we can ask the, 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 the learner at this point to Okay, now we have asked ourselves questions, we've discussed it, now let's collaborate, let's create something that we can take home to our children, to our families, because our children are wondering about this. Um, what can we do? You know, we, we don't want to just learn in isolation. So this is where we can, we can encourage our learner to create something. Um, they can also reflect on it. One aspect that um, is really important is reflection. Asking the, the learner, what did you learn? Why did you learn it? Um, how can you take what you've learned and make it apply in your life? Is there a, is there a circumstance or a situation that applies right now that this, this will help you with? Can you solve a problem? Can you make decisions? 
you have to make a decision about what am I going to share with my child who is at home, who might be two or three or four or five, and they're, they're terrified. So you make a choice, you make a decision, you work as a team member so that they see that in this very safe environment that hopefully you have created in your classroom, that they are able to collaborate because they trust the person next door to them and they see the value in the person sitting next to them because we have to show them in our safe environment that we are all here to learn and we all bring something very valuable to the table so we are all going to bring different parts of this we're going to analyze we're going to evaluate we're going to summarize we're going to we're going to engage those higher level thinking skills that we need our students to learn but we haven't done a single lesson plan at all in this we have perhaps written on the board you know what is coronavirus you know what do we want to know and then we let the students drive the entire inquiry and we then as the the facilitator can help them collaborate create maybe they're 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 stumped they don't know what to do i'm at a block what do i do you as the facilitator might inquire well i wonder about this or i heard that or somehow where we can guide them to learning something else and so that's really the learner-centered ideology this idea that um what's in it for me i have now our, our learner has gone through inquiry discussion collaboration creation reflection and they're accountable you know now we we can we can keep them accountable because now in our lesson and in, in our record we can write down all of these wonderful higher level skills that our student has learned without realizing they're learning it because we didn't have okay here's our lesson on inquiry you know so it's something that is now going to be intrinsic we want them to take this idea of learning and make it intrinsic so that they want to know so that they want to go home and share this with their family and their children and it encourages the, the participants to draw on their own personal experiences and knowledge and relate that to what their neighbor knows so that they can see that there is value in the inquiry there is value in my neighbor and what my neighbor knows and what my neighbor thinks all right so we're we're just building this entire strategy so that our teachers and our excuse me our learners our parents are learning without even realizing it so again if you want to know more there is a link at the very end i i encourage you to, to look into that um after i learned a lot about malcolm knowles and his andragogy this learner centered ideology made so much more sense and so now I want to make sure that we put our learner in the center of things and I'm not saying at all that the teachers are not valuable because without the teacher the learner may not know how to get started so we can get them started but our student our t our parent is no longer passive and then they can go home and say oh my goodness did you know what I learned or hey let's hop on this or let's watch that video or something um, because they have worked out their fears and their needs and their doubts in that safe environment that we have all done we have created so that they can now go home and create that safe learning environment for their children all right so now we're just going to talk about some perhaps fun ways um, and engaging activities i used to always um, tell my kids it's edutainment it's it's you know those fun activities that we we do every day that our children don't even realize that they're learning you know as they're as we're driving you know down the the street we're saying you know what does this red sign that has that has all the edges on it mean what does it mean when we have a red stoplight what wh which way do i turn right or left these are those fun activities that our, our kids don't even realize they're learning 
um, until they sit back on it and reflect later on, oh, you know what? I did learn something. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, and we're gonna talk about some in engaging activities that are kid friendly. And um, as Gina mentioned, there is a, somewhere on here, there are handouts. And I actually have put several handouts um, for the ones down here at the bottom, the family literacy and work related interactive activities. Um, but first I'll start with the one fish, two fish matching. So you've probably all seen Dr. Seuss's one fish, two fish book. Um, we were recently invited to a school readiness fair. This happened the first weekend in March. It coincides with Dr. Seuss's birthday. It is sponsored by the Judy Center and every one of our family literacy partners um, are engaged in that. And this is where our library just is awesome. They're phenomenal. So what we do with this is Again, we are not there to necessarily teach the children. So we take an activity and we say, okay, here's one fish, two fish. We, we might have this book. We can get it from the library. But now what, what does the parent do? So the parent can actually make this a game. Um, and what we did is I simply traced a fish pattern and we cut out fish and we made it a matching game. And so um, we would put a big A and a little A, big B, and we would do the alphabet. So they would they would learn to match their um, their letters. We did it with numbers. We, as the children were getting older, we said you could do math facts. You could do you know one times two, and they have to find the two. Right, <laughs> I had to think about that. So it's they don't even realize it, and then you read the book with the child. You sit down with the child on your lap or beside of you and you read the book. And what do you know? They've all learned this and the parent has learned it. Now, what we have found is that the parents need to, to have us work with that in the classroom. So we actually had a teacher who read the One Fish, Two Fish book with her classroom and did the activity before we, we asked the parents to go home. Um, Another fun activity that we have been working on this time is family journaling. What do you remember? And this idea that um, in, in the classroom, we are, and we are all virtual, but we will post a question of, what do you remember about the virus? What do you remember about your days at home? Um, and it's something that perhaps um, your child can't write, but your child could draw a picture. And it also, it just opens that, that conversation between the parent and the child. So again, we're working with the parent, demonstrating to them how to engage their activities. Because if we don't make it fun for them, it's not going to be fun for their children. All right. So I'm going to go to, I think, um, let's see if I can go to my last slide. All right. My last slide here is my um, resources. And if I go here to um, Pennsylvania State University, Penn State has the Goodling Institute. And I'm going to, I don't know if I can go there. I'm hoping you all can still see me. Um, the Goodling Institute has this family literacy work related plans. Um, it's 191 pages. So obviously I didn't want to print it all out. Um, I'm guessing you're still seeing my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, Debbie. Okay, good. So this, this is a fantastic resource for literacy work-related lesson plans. When I was doing my, my teacher training, the one thing that my teacher told me was, don't recreate the wheel. Beg, beg borrow, and steal. This is free. It's on there. It has lesson plans that have basic work skills, but they're, they're, they're CCRS aligned. And if we look here at the table of contents, reads with understanding. And you can see that this is a program that covers all of the areas. And I just picked out a couple. Um, there's applies mathematical operations, concepts, and reasoning. And if you see there, we have applies mathematical concepts and operations, workplace fractions. I gotta tell you, Somebody in our program loves fractions and they do it all the time. I hate math, but here it is. But then look down here at the bottom, 
then we have um, PBS Math Line, Egg Vision, Number Based and Counting Rhymes. What do you know? Now we're taking something that we've worked on in, in the classroom and we've done it at home. Um, if you look, let's see, Reads with Understanding up here at the top, we have um, reading tables, graphs, and maps. That is a social studies concept um, that a lot of uh, students struggle with when they're going to take the GED test. Here it is in a fun family game day format. It's an interactive literacy. So not only in your class are you going to do the adult education activity, you're going to introduce that interactive literacy activity. Um, Clifford, I don't know if you all remember, but Clifford was the big red dog. My daughter loved Clifford. We had everything Clifford for a while, but here he is. What should I say? Say it the right way. And then it's an interactive activity, Clifford says. And actually, if we were to go back to, huh, well, maybe not. Um, I'm sorry, my, I have a dog that's outside that apparently is tearing apart my, um, my deck. So you'll see here, we have an adult education activity. Here is your objective, your materials sheet, a procedure, reflection, and other related ideas. It's important to always have the reflection. And if we keep going down, we're going to see some other things and boom, here's your family interactive family literacy. Work together to build a game. This can start in your classroom. Form a list of rules. Here we go, synonyms and antonyms. Again, all of these are CCRS standards that we have to get our, our students to understand. And they're not even doing it as a lesson plan because we are relating everything to what we can do to take it home to our children. All right. Um, writes clearly and concisely. We have a lot of adults who are trying to get into the workplace, but they don't have, they don't understand standard English. And that's why when we are doing the uh, learner centered approach, we have to get the students to communicate with standard English. It's important for them to understand that there is a language that we use in class. There's a language that we use at work. And there is certainly a totally different language that we use at home and on Facebook. Um, and so it's it's more important about those those standard skills. For those of you working with ESL, they're they're communicating without really um, doing a grammar lesson because as an English teacher, that's me, nobody wants to do a grammar and mechanics lesson. I mean, it's horrible. So here we go. We have just this fun way of doing it. Um, and again, you you could uh, share this. I, I would strongly recommend that you share this entire program with your community partner because when you have a family literacy event, you want your your pact to have a childhood education. You know, here's a pack of picnic and they're gonna read the bear's picnic. There's your library, they're gonna bring in the book. You let them know what book, here's their activity. And then when we get all together, we have the, the adult has done back here. We have done purposeful writing. We have done some things about filling out a personnel health record. We all know about forms. We're tying it all together, pack a picnic, and then boom, here we are all together getting the job done. So I just wanna you know, encourage you to check out this resource. Um, here is a lesson in, in journal writing that I found. Again, if you Google it, I gotta tell you, I very rarely have to create something new because it's fantastic. And even though you see it says grades two to three, you need to modify it based on your students. And you'd be surprised what your students are excited about doing. Right. So hopefully, let me go back here. Um, so what did we learn today? Hopefully, hopefully, um, if we go back to those objectives that we had at the very beginning, um, if I could find it, which you know I can't. Um, do we have do we have new ways that we can 
engage our learner. Do we have, have we come up with at least two opportunities to engage our adult student? Do we have, I wish I had kept things straight. Sorry. Here we go. Go with the flow. That's what I always say. So you should have at least two new activities for your literacy plans. Um, and hopefully you understand a little bit better about what you can do with family literacy in your class. Um, I'm going to take it off Thank of the. So much, Debbie. That was what wonderful happened? and super. Oh. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we've had a number of questions. How do I get my hands on these resources? And I assure you, all the content will be available on our website where you were able to register. Um, at the completion of the Institute. So please, um, you know, give me a couple of days to upload that for you. Um, I just put a link to a feedback survey. If you're not able to do it now, if you can do a survey on the actual website for each session that you participate in, we'd love to know where we can grow and how we can better serve our teachers in the state. Um, but I do wanna take a moment to thank you, Debbie. We really appreciate you sharing your experiences and I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. Yeah, and please be in touch with me if you want anything more, if I need to explain it better. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you. Bye.